video on QFlash for Gigabyte motherboards. It's a quick tutorial on how to actually use QFlash, especially if you cannot boot your system. We have a motherboard, a Gigabyte A620S2H. Make sure that your motherboard first of all supports QFlash before you do this tutorial. So we're just going to go directly to the motherboard manufacturer first. We're going to create the USB flash drive that we need. So we're going to find that on Gigabyte's website. Make sure you have the proper revision number. In this case, our revision is 1.0, which is correct. So we're going to go over to support. We're going to go to BIOS. We're going to grab the newest BIOS, F31C at the current time of recording. We're going to grab that file. We're going to open it up and we're going to prepare the flash drive. So to prepare the flash drive, we're going to first erase the flash drive. You want to use a flash drive that is very old or, or an older version of it, like USB 1.0 or USB 2.0. If you have a USB 3.0 drive, it may work, it may not work. I noticed with older flash drives, we're having much better luck with that compared to newer flash drives. So be sure to maybe find an older flash drive. This would be perfect for an older flash drive. You also don't need that much space. You know, the, the entire size of this thing is 33,554 bytes. So it's like 34 megabytes, I think. It's not that big. What we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare the flash drive. I'm gonna open up a command prompt first. So I'm gonna do CMD. I'm gonna run it as administrator. So be sure you're running this as administrator. You're gonna now type in disk part. Make sure your flash drive, of course, is listed there. So you're gonna hit list disk. You'll see that I have my flash drive here, it's 114 gigs. We'll just say select disk one. And then you gotta type the word clean, the word clean. Now, before you hit enter on this, clean basically means that it's going to remove all the partitions as well as all of the data off of the flash drive. So hit return, but be sure that you're using a flash drive that you're not worried about any data on because it will be wiped from that flash drive. Also make sure that you're on the correct disk because you may accidentally clean the wrong disk and you will lose all that data that's on that disk. If you're unsure, unplug any disks that you're worried about. And of course, obviously you would never choose disk zero. That's always your main drive most of the time. Clean it. After it's cleaned, you want to open up disk management. To do that, you can right click start and then hit disk management. And you'll see that your disk one has come up totally unallocated, which means that it is empty. So we're going to right click this and you're going to create new simple volume. You're going to hit next. What you want to do is specify the volume size. You're going to put 2000 megabytes in there. You're going to hit next. Assign the following drive letter as E. Uh, file system is very important to be choose, choose FAT32. Now the reason why I chose 2000 megabytes is because I want to make it small enough so that FAT32 will be an option. If you are too large, uh, you will only have an NTFS as an option. So that's why I'm specifying a file size. Volume lab, volume label, I'm just going to label it B1, but it really doesn't matter what you label it. Perform a quick format, yes, because we don't want to wait for that. Hit finish. Give it a few seconds, it will go through its little process, and then it'll assign a drive letter, and it will sign up there. So at this point, you'll be able to open up File Explorer. It should show up as your drive letter, which we're going to open up E. And you're going to take the extraction of the zip file, and you're going to only grab the file that you need which is going to have the, uh, the version number at the end of it. So in this case, it says F31C. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag it over to your new drive. It's going to extract over there. Now what you want to do is you want to rename this file. So to do that, you just push F2 and it'll let you rename. Or you could just click the file and it'll also let you rename it. If you click it once, if you like to do that. Uh, what you're going to rename it to is you're going to highlight the whole thing and you're going to replace it with gigabyte dot bin. Now you always do gigabyte up, uppercase and then I put dot and then bin is lowercase. Hit return. I don't know if this matters, but I've had some issues with dot bin being uppercase and it not work on certain boards. So be sure dot bin is lowercase. At this point, th that's all you have to do for making the flash drive itself. We're going to go over to the computer side and I'm going to show you how to actually push the button and what to do and go from there. Now you should already have a flash drive created. So this is the drive I've got going for me right now. It's a little older SanDisk drive. It is a larger drive, but um, it seems to work fine. I had a few Samsung drives that didn't work for some strange reason. So be sure if you, if you run into a small problem or a glitch that just doesn't want to upgrade, most likely it has to do with 
the flash drive. So make sure that you use, just maybe try a different flash drive or just try a cheap one. This is 128 gigabytes. This is way overkill. You can do like an eight gigabyte drive, it's fine. Let's go over to the machine. On the machine itself, you will find a button called Q Flash Plus. In this case, it's right here on the board. Now, this happens to be on the back of the system. Sometimes it's on the board itself. You may want to look around the board. It should say Q Flash Plus. That's the one for Gigabyte. That's the button we're going to be pushing when we have to actually start doing everything. You have to have this flash drive plugged into the one that says BIOS, which you'll see that it says BIOS really smallly here. You're going to plug that into there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the power here. And after you've plugged in the power, you're going to flip this to on, but you're not going to push the power button on the front of the computer. What you're going to do is push Q flash. You don't want to actually put the you know, put power to the unit because it's it needs to be in a sleep state, or in other words, non-powered state for this to work. When you push this button, I'm going to show you guys what's going to happen on the other side, which will be the LED here should light up. This LED is a little hard to see from the back, so I'm going to turn the case around a little bit so you can get a better view of what's going to happen. But make sure to flip this into the on position first. Okay, now down by where the flash drive is, which is way down here, you're gonna see a little orange light that's gonna light up. So let me just push the button. And we're gonna flash this BIOS again, even if it's already been flashed. So it might go quickly, but uh, it should take actually a little bit of time. So I'm gonna push the button. You should hear, see that little orange lights blinking, that's good. That means it's starting. It's gonna find the file. That orange light right there is blinking. That means it's doing something, just let it go. If it's done correctly, this should take about five to six minutes. Now, if this light turns off really fast and the whole system turns off, then you've done something wrong. Maybe the flash drive is incorrect or the flash drive itself Maybe uh, this flash drive itself, maybe even just not compatible, not working with it correctly for this board. Again, that's why I keep saying to use like an older flash drive seems to work better than most of the newer ones. Uh, Samsung happened to not work for me. The SanDisk worked for me. Uh, also another one, what was the other one? Kingston worked for me as well, I think. So either one of those should work with no problem. Now this is gonna take a little while. It's gonna continuously flash like this. Once it's done, you'll see the power supply flip off and do its own thing. Steady light means that it's almost ready, but just let it continue. It'll continue its process, flashing. By the way, you do not need a CPU installed. You do not need you know, a graphic card installed or anything. You just need the power to the motherboard. So basically, you just need this 8-pin connector and the 24-pin connector that's way down there. So that's all you need to be plugged in for this to work. You don't even need a screen plugged in for this to work. Once this completes, then you'll be able, you should be able to boot your system up after you put the CPU in and all that if you, if you don't have a CPU in. By the way, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you have a CPU in or not. You can do the CPU later, that's up to you. If you know your CPU isn't supported by this BIOS, you may wanna do this process first to be able to eliminate this problem, just work a little faster for you so you don't have to like do extra work. Also, while this is on a bench is the best time to do it. I already have this in the system. Probably not the smartest idea to do it this way because it's kind of hard to see on camera, I apologize. But it's very simple, you know, you still see this light going. You still see the flash drive here. You know, it'll eventually complete. Once it's done, the flashing will stop and the power supply and any fans, if you have fans plugged in, they will also shut off. If you have a tech company and you want to just flash a bunch of boards before you start, you don't need to actually have the CPUs yet. You can get ahead of that beforehand. Okay, we're just waiting on it. At this point, by the way, while this is going, do not unplug the computer. It, it won't destroy the whole thing because this is a flashback utility, but it, it'll be a bad idea. You know what I mean? Like you'll have to rerun this again and have a whole bunch of other issues. So I'd recommend that you know, you're know you on stable power. Don't do this during a thunderstorm or something. Or if you have a UPS battery, be sure the UPS battery is powered up, working and correctly done. Okay, now it's complete. You'll see the light goes off. 
the power supply should turn off in a second, or it might actually boot up to Windows. Yeah, it's actually rebooting in Total BIOS. Okay, so at this point, when that light is done, that means you're, you're ready. You can pretty much shut the machine off or do anything that you need to do at this point. The BIOS should be up to date. So you'll be able to take the flash drive out, power off the units. I usually just give it a quick power off. It's gonna say the BIOS is reset, so let's go to the other screen. We're gonna turn on the unit and we'll see where we're at. It should boot up to probably BIOS reset. There it goes. It's a very long boot up time. By the way, the boot time with AMD processors for the first time booting literally could be like three minutes. So wait off, be patient. You'll notice the BIOS has been updated. So basically, if you look in the BIOS, you'll see that on the left side, you'll see CPU obviously is now booting with no issue with that processor. And the BIOS version is now on F31C. Your BIOS will be reset. So at this point, you'll have to set up your XMP profile or anything else that you may need. XMP profile, we're gonna choose XMP1. And we don't need any other stuff. We're just gonna double check booting. Sequence is booting to the correct drive, which it is. And then we're gonna go over to save settings and exit, which is also F10. And we're gonna save and that's it. You should be all good to go at this point. If uh, you're having a problem, I would recommend that uh, you check your drive, make sure that you're on FAT32, make sure that, you know, you're in a small partition and maybe change the USB flash drive. If it, or if it keeps blinking for like four or five seconds and then shuts off, it usually means the flash drive is just not reading correctly. Just choose another flash drive. Again, something a little older is probably better just to be sure that it works on that port. Cause I also noticed that it's a USB 1.0 slash 2.0 port. Some of the newer drives, it just doesn't read the format correct. If you have a different motherboard and you have a different flashback device, it may work a little differently. It may not be labeled gigabyte.bin obviously. It may be named whatever the manufacturer is, you may have to look that up in manual, but this is for a gigabyte motherboard. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.